Yeah, you read that title right. Welcome to Wasting 12 Minutes with your good pal Misty slash Connexia. So anime! Just like any other type of media, there's some outstanding masterpiece content that are so advanced philosophically, emotionally, spiritually, that they can just transcend your perspective of life. Except today we're not looking at those. Welcome to 10 anime that are so bad they're good and damn bad again. But you can like them, you probably won't, but maybe, they'll make you laugh. And that's what I'm going for. That's my angle. Have a seat. Take off your pants. Unless you're watching this video inside of Starbucks, because that might be illegal. And let's begin this train wreck. <laughs> Number 10. Maho Shoujo Special Ops Asuka. I don't usually have a gripe against Magical Girl anime. Truth be told, there's probably several ones that are worse than this one. My problem with Special Ops Asuka is that it's not even a magical girl anime, despite its title. If anything is more akin to military focus with several female in this cast, the quality is jarring by moments and the story is nonsensical for the most time. There's a scene where the girls are walking in the street and a guy flick a cigarette away, it falls on the girl's shoe, and what does she do? Threaten to snap his arm? Like, okay girl, he fucked up, but your retaliation is way too intense. The show tends to go overboard on a lot of factor and it makes it hard to take it seriously. Which makes it pretty ludicrous. Uh, the word, not the rapper. Number 9. Mad Bull 34. Here it is. There's a guy who has a grape, do you, do you call this a grape? Of grenades tied to his pubes to shoot down the bad guys. I mean, if that doesn't spell greatness, I don't know what else to pitch to you to sell you this show. This anime is a four episode that, honestly, uh, should have been converted into a three hour long movie. It's chock full of 90s spirit making fun of 70s and 80s buddy cop films. It's self-aware enough that truly boosts the greatness of this series. The story is about a Japanese-American rookie cop who joins the New York precinct. 99! Oh no, it's actually a 34th precinct. My bad. Anyway, he's paired with Mad Bull, who's a maniac with his own sense of justice. If you watch this seriously, <laughs> I can guarantee you will hate it but it's the perfect definition of a so bad it's good in my book. <laughs> Number 8, Aiken. More like, I can't believe this anime actually exists. You've never seen anime titties as oppressive as these. They put Hanny Hawkins to shame. Google her, I'll wait. You good? You can literally kill a horse with those. Ah, yikes. The story in itself is yeah, it's just an excuse to put 30 double J's on lollies. I, I don't know what kind of fetish that is, but I'm sure if there's a term for tripophobia, there's gotta be a market for that shit too. The characters are bland, insipid, and downright criminally boorish. They want you to believe this harem romantic comedy is a huge success for a main character who's drawing pussies like Jim Davis. But honestly, at that point, I'd rather just watch Anti. I mean, you're gonna give me all of the teas with none of the rewards. What's the point? The nips. The nips are the point here. Because these fuckers are sharp. I heard they use those to cut diamonds and jewelry. <laughs> <sighs> number seven, Pupa, Pupa, I've never known how to pronounce it. I watched the first episode of Pupa and it made me want to pull out faster than I did for my second daughter. Hey yo, that's a joke for my very niche audience of wanted but unexpected pregnancies. All seven of you watching my shitty lists. The story of this nightmare fuel is about a sister who's turned demonic. She craved human flesh, so her Aniki big brother Onichan senpai offers her his body like a cheap whore buffet. The anime has a weird vibe of incestuous overtone that, uh, frankly, nobody, not a single soul, never anyone in the universe asked for. Watching her weekly flail about is exhausting. Honestly, I've seen children with leukemia who had more vigor than her. So I assure you, this train wreck falls perfectly in this so bad it's good category. With episodes of 4 minutes, it's it's still actually not worth the time to self-torture you to see how awful this is truly. Bonita! 
Number six, Vatican Miracle Examiner. Honestly, truth to God, you're better off watching paint dry off of a wall. The only anime about the Vatican, and it's one of too many cooks in a kitchen kind of deal. If you've never heard of this anime before, I just did you a disservice and I can't live off with that. And I'll commit Sudoku after this video, but I'll go in, yeah I said Sudoku, but I'll go in with the blissful belief that you were going to pick it up anyway and I'm just preventing some kind of Lee Harvey Oswald scenario happening. Fine, go ahead and Google him too, but you're holding back the group today, John. The story is about two very good friends who investigate odd claims of miracles. The show seemed good for the first three episodes and then it's like it face-planted in gravel and grinded to the ground like a curling stone. It's a Canadian thing, don't worry about it. That's a very hilarious joke for us, hosers. Eh? Don't worry about it, we'll get some Timmy's after. Stigma? Number five, King's Game. Oh, King's Game. Man, I'm still so disappointing about this one. The premise was everything I would dreamed about. If you don't know me, I love the survival genre. So here you have a story of a classroom who all receive texts that gives them the order from a random king. If they disobey the order or don't execute them in time, they die, gruesomely, with magical supernatural power. It's like a giant game of truth or dare. Except it's don't die and have sex with your best friend's girlfriend while you watch kind of ultimatum. Sounds great on paper, but unfortunately uh, that's how it should have stayed. The characters are unbearingly unlikable. Two words that I had to make up to describe how god awful this show is. The plot has more hold than a wheel of Swiss cheese that got gunned down by a vindictive mafia. And it's just uh, oh so stupid. Go in with the same youthful innocence I had, and I assure you, it's just more disappointment every episode. <laughs> Number four, Gyo. Dude, how can I even explain Gyo to you? Let me paint you a picture. It's like you're going for a three day escape party in the woods with your friends and everything is great. You got booze, entertainment, your friends just got engaged. Suddenly a bunch of biped giraffe just rolled in on a Segway and they flex some tricks on you like they're in Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. This is a long winded way to say the enemy had something really good going on but then they took a right turn into what the fuck town and fell off of a cliff. Story is about a girl hanging out with some friends and then fish robots take over the world. <laughs> it's rotten and smells awful. I mean for them. I mean, maybe for you too, clean up your room, it's way overdue. But here's the thing, I don't regret having watched this movie, I just, I, I, I don't get it. Like why? Watch, you'll get what I mean, but again, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, why? Number three. Mars of Destruction. All right, a little bit about myself. Uh, I went and studied movie making in college when I was younger. And there's a term in cinema called B-movies. That usually means low budget movies, but people have started associating the B for the word bad. While it's not always the case, by extension, that would mean normal good movies are rated A movies. Well, Mars of Destruction would be a Z movie, but I mean that in a good way. They tried their best with whatever little budget they had and it gave us this 20 minute long train wreck. Look at the review it got. 10, 10, 1, 10. It's a good average. I mean, the visuals speaks for themselves. They can't even fit the standard 4x3 screen format. It's like this weird black border at the bottom. Great place to put subtitles in, but a lot of wasted room if you ask me. And the story? I mean, what story? Aliens from Mars came to wreck up the planet. Only Takeru and his big titties got friends can save the day. Please enjoy this classic to the fullest extent. <laughs> Number fucking two. Skelter Heaven. Believe it or not, a year before Mars of Destruction, its director, Sato Yoshiteru, 
remember that name? Made an even bigger mindfuck. Remember when I said Mars of Destruction was a Z type of movie? Skelter Heaven isn't even in the alpha numerical scale. Skelter Heaven, a sci-fi, mecha, a stumbling mess about, you guessed it, Big titties, behes taking on extraterrestrial threat. I mean, this anime speaks for itself. It's a walking headache. This is CGI from the PS2 era. Saying that it's jarring would be an understatement. The plot doesn't go anywhere. I mean, how could it? It doesn't even have leg to stand on. I'm not really sure how or why is Idea Factory constantly greenlighting this, but they do make for a one heck of a good entertainment. I just hope this is done purposefully as a joke. You know, like the movie Birdemic or Sharknado, because otherwise it would be incredibly sad and I, I don't think I can handle that level of... Yikes. Could it be any, you know, modern bathrooms? So you were scared too then, huh? And finally, standing at the top of the so bad it's good, we got a number one, a ghost stories dub. This is the greatest thing anime has ever offered the world. So the story behind this is that several years ago, the ghost story anime aired in Japan and it flopped tremendously, like a magic carp using splash. So when it came time to license the show in the West, they just said, eh, just do whatever you want with it. So they did. They made an abridged, pretty much. The voice actor ad-libbed the entire script, as long as it followed somewhat what was on the screen, and the lip flaps, they green-lighted it. So they gave us jams like uh, the lesbian director, Principals always look like lesbians. Or any other scenes, truly. I genuinely, sincerely recommend you to watch this if you want an all-out laughter session. Even better if you watch it with friends. Seriously, this is the best bonding you'll have by a long shot. Do you hear the excitement in my voice? This is actual praises, but all for the wrong reasons. What <laughs> doing here? School's over. Go home, you silly. No, thanks. Oh, nice cat. Well, thank God we finished this tyranny. You know what? In the past 10 minutes, you could have made your bed, cleaned off your desk, pack a snack for tomorrow, declutter your wallet, delete blurry photos from your phone, or even like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. But instead, you chose to watch my video, and I thank you for that. Now, since we both agree procrastination is a bitch and a half, why not watch another top 10 list of mine? I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you like my jokes here, I can guarantee you will be mildly exhaling from your nose at my other ones. Very mildly, but it counts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side. Yeah, I'm still hip. I've been to the hard times, I've been on the wrong side, I've been ashamed. So many memories, you know I'd like to change. Yeah.